All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're going to be going over, honestly, one of Synology's best features that I've really not been able to test or do tutorials on because I didn't have a Windows license. Well, I finally broke down and boot camped my computer, and so now I'm finally able to start doing tutorials using Synology's Active Backup for Business, and it is by far one of Synology's best features. So do not let the name worry you that, oh, this is just a business application. Synology Active Backup for Business allows you to back up in incredible detail any Windows computer, basically being able to restore it and all of the files from any time period, even being able to do what's called a bare metal restore. I know that sounds like a lot and very complicated, but it's really incredibly easy. Essentially what that allows you to do is throw your hard drive out the window of your computer, get a new hard drive, and then just using Synology's tool and a USB drive, you basically just create this install flash drive. Then once you've hooked up your new hard drive into your computer, you plug in the flash drive and Synology will automatically reset up your computer just like it was whenever that last active backup for business snapshot was taken. So that means every single one of your files is the same way. Every single one of your settings, it is what's called bare metal the computer hardly knows that there was a different hard drive in there. It is incredibly powerful. It does that as well as being able to allow you to go through the portal and access all the versions of your files that it has without having to go through this clunky system. You can just see all versions of all of your files. It is one of their best features and it is completely free. And so honestly, if you have a Windows PC that you need to be backing up, it is so much better. I actually like it better than Mac's Time Machine because it's so quick compared to using Time Machine to back something up. I actually am hoping that one day they have a Mac client for this because I honestly would use it over Time Machine. It is that good. And so in this video, we're gonna go over how to back up any Windows PC to a Synology NAS automatically, and it will just run in the background and anytime it can connect, it'll be backing up your files and snapshots of your files. And so it's really easy to go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and log into DSM. And as you can see right here, I'm currently on the DSM 7 beta, but Active Backup for Business is essentially identical between the two versions. So I'm just making these all in DSM 7 for future life. And so the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is go into Package Center. And we're just gonna go ahead and click Active Backup for Business. If you're not in the beta, or if this is the live version, it won't say join beta, it'll just say download, but click on it. And it's just gonna go ahead and install. It is going to make you do one thing and you're actually gonna to have to sign into Synology. You're not gonna to have to pay for this at all, but they do make you sign in. I think it's because they want to make sure that people who are using Xpologies, basically open source version of Synology, since Synology is based off of Linux, they're required to give the source code out. They don't want those people being able to use this tool, I think. I'm not sure why else. I've not seen anything else that is free that makes you do this from Synology, but that's just my best guess. So once it's downloaded, you just go ahead and click open. And it's gonna say, hey, you have to activate it. And apparently there is a process for an air gap Synology to activate it. But I have a network connection, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and click activate. And you're just gonna to have to go ahead and agree and sign in. And so once you've done that, we get to here. One thing I did forget to mention earlier is unfortunately active backup for business does require you to have a volume using BTRFS. So that is a limitation. You're not gonna be able to use this on the J models or anything that does not have BTRFS enabled. That's why I really would recommend if you're building a volume, just select BTRFS if you can, because it unlocks so many great features that comes with Synology and it is just so powerful. So unfortunately, if you have an EXT4 or three volume, you're just not going to be able to use Active Backup for Business. And so the user interface is incredibly easy. And I've already touched on this for the file server backup, but the real power is under PC. So PCs are super easy to use. We're just gonna be able to click add device and it's going to tell us how to do this. Essentially, you just install the software on every single Windows PC you'd like backed up and it's got the target for it right here. Just click on it, 32 or 64 bit. If your process is 64 bit, I would choose 64 bit. All right, and so once it's gone ahead and downloaded, just go ahead and click on it and basically run through the installer. And it installs really quick and just go ahead and launch it once it's done. All right, and so now we can see right here, the icon's up, so we just click on it. And now it's just incredibly easy to set up. You just do the server address and then the login credentials. And so I do believe you have to log into this with admin credentials. And so for server address, type in the server address, 
for me it's testbed, that's spacerex. And I believe this also should support basically whatever this server name is using the local domain. And then just sign in. Most of you will not be running a proxy, and if you're running proxy, I assume you already know what you're doing with this stuff. And so this is one thing, you're, you might get an error like this if you've not set up a properly signed SSL certificate. Basically it says, hey, this is not a, the right SSL certificate. It is not officially signed. But since I know this is my SSL certificate and this is just locally, that is okay. You actually still get full SSL encryption because you are using a signed SSL certificate. It's just not the correct signature. And so your device says, hey, are you sure you wanna trust this? But once you trust it, it still uses it just like anything else. And so we're just gonna go ahead and click proceed anyway. And so now it's basically set us up for it. And so we're just gonna click okay. And so as we can see in DSM right here, we've got, hey, there's a new device connected. And so we can go ahead and basically set up whatever we'd like with this. We can now see it and we've got a ton of options here. We can go through and create a new task for it with edit. You can say backup specific drives, you can say volumes, you can choose whatever you like here and it's really great. You can choose the schedule. So I would really recommend having this honestly be a daily backup because it is so nice to have. And you can even have this running in the background and have it run within special things. It's a really cool setup. And finally, the most important thing is probably retention. Retention basically says how long to keep data once it's been deleted off your computer before deleting it off the backup. So if you retain everything for a year, essentially any files you delete on your computer will stay on the NAS for an entire year. And so that's just where you've got a plan for how much storage you'd like. You can always go a little bit less aggressive, so maybe a year to start with. And then if you notice it being very large, you can essentially decrease this and then it'll just delete the old versions. And so I would start with a longer policy and then go to a shorter one if you start ru running out of space or just don't need it. And then under advanced retention policies where you really set that of, hey, when do you wanna keep everything? So I'm just gonna have a snapshot every month for the last year. And so what this means is I'm gonna keep my last 10 versions. That's this. Then I'm gonna go through the list and essentially for every earliest one that meets something, I'm gonna keep it. Then if I go down this list and everything's already been met, I'm going to delete a snapshot that does not meet any of these extra ones. And so I'm gonna make sure to have a version for every day for seven days. And so if I had two snapshots in a day, essentially the one that was taken later in the day would be the one that gets deleted. And same thing for the weeks and everything like that. It's pretty straightforward. And so I'm gonna choose that. Though depending on your needs, you can really set this up to whatever you need. And honestly, that's all there is to it. I would really recommend having compression because it can really help you out. And now we're just gonna go ahead and click okay. And now we're gonna say backup now. And wow, we are flying through here. We are really using this 10 gig card. Remember, well, you probably don't know, I've only got three eight terabyte drives in a RAID zero array here. So having 200 megabytes per second is pretty good, especially if you start counting random writes, that can actually really slow down a hard drive. But we're doing pretty well. Well, we've slowed down a little bit. But yeah, it flies through it. I'm very impressed by it. All right, and so that backup went pretty quick. And so now we can kind of see what's going on with it. But first, I want to add one change to a file just to make it a lot easier to see what's going on with it. So backups use snapshots, which are awesome. It allows you to save a ton of space while also having a lot of versions of files. BTRFS snapshots are a really cool thing and Synology's really been leveraging them with their applications. And so we're just gonna go ahead and minimize this. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new file for us. And we'll just say, this is a test. Simple enough, right? So now I have this file on there. So now let's go back in and we're gonna go ahead and do one more backup really quick. And this one should go fairly quickly because we're just gonna go ahead and it'll just see, oh wait, there's just one very small change. Though it still does kind of have to check everything. And so now we've done that, right? We've got that backup. Now we're gonna go ahead and make a modification to that file. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it again. So I just made a modification to the file and I'm gonna save it. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and back it up again. And this way we'll see exactly what active backup for business allows you to do. All right, so now that that second backup is done, we can really see the power of this. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and close active backup for business and I'm gonna open my applications folder. And you're gonna see right here that it's installed this active backup for business portal. And so the portal is how you restore things and see different options. And so if you look down here, we have a timeline. And right here is your volume that you've backed up. And so disk zero is going to be your C drive most likely. And so you can see right here, there's a bunch of different stuff here. And this is your C drive. So let's just go into users. We'll, we'll go into my desktop. And we can see that there's this test file. And so there are multiple options here. So if we go into the very initial version, we're going to see that test file does not exist. Then if we go to the second version and we click on it, we've got two different options. We can either restore it and it will just basically put the new file in there for us. And so let's do that. And so what this is going to do is it's just going to overwrite that file. Before you do this, I would actually recommend doing another backup, which we've already done, just to make sure that if you accidentally overwrite something you didn't plan on overwriting, you'll have that file. But we can now just go ahead and click OK. And now if we go in, we should open up test and we'll see that this is the first modification to the file before I put that second line in there. And that's the power of this, is we were able to incredibly easily go back to an older version of a file. If we didn't want to restore it, we also could have just downloaded the thing and then had two versions of it and merge whatever changes we wanted in. It is incredibly powerful. And this is just the file side. As I said earlier, you can do the exact same thing, but from a hard drive level, meaning you can throw your hard drive out, stick that USB drive in and create your hard drive exactly how it was at any point in time where you had a snapshot. It is incredibly powerful and beats out most backup solutions that I know for Windows. And so this tool is incredibly powerful. You can just go through and browse all these different files and it also does deduplication. Meaning if you back up a lot of Windows computers, you'll actually be saving space because most likely they've got very similar program files and installation files, which Active Backup for Business will just compress. We can look through it here under Active Backup for Business Regular. And if we scroll down, we'll see the file size of everything and we'll see the compression and deduplication that we've got. It is really amazing. And so even though I've just backed up one computer, it's already saved nine gigs due to deduplication. And so you can back up a ton of different Windows PCs to this and really save a ton of data because it's most likely they're gonna have very similar files on there. You can also go through and back up virtual machines and so many other stuff. DSM-7 also has a beta that allows you to back up Linux machines, which I'm really excited to try out. And so really that's all there is to it. Your Synology is now just in the background going to be constantly backing up your Windows PC and it is going to work so well. You're going to forget about it until you need it. And it is very self-sufficient. I would also recommend turning on notifications for your email. That way, if something does happen, you will get an email about it. And so you don't have backups breaking and you never finding out. Remember, backups are only good if you can restore from them. And so it's always a good idea to go through every few months and just do a manual restore. Just say, hey, do I have all the files on there? Just to make sure, especially for those mission critical data. All right, well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. As you see here, Active Backup for Business is incredibly powerful and there's so many things you can do with it. Go and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.